Welcome back folks. Uh, another installment of the uh, thermal, thermal quad carburetor. Uh, today I was going to be talking a little bit about setting up your uh, your primary metering rods and the uh, the tree that uh, actuates them. Uh, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in a previous video I had mentioned how this works. There's a step up cam and lever inside on the throttle body and it's uh, located on the uh, the primary throttle, throttle shaft. Um, there's a spring in here. What I'll do for starters is explain a little bit about how it works and get it out of there for you and show you the component parts. Um, there was two two styles of stop plates here. This one is a spring-loaded kind of a one. Uh, it's probably designed to keep you from bending the um, the step-up rod in this uh, metering rod tree if you over adjust it. Uh, other ones I've worked on have a solid steel plate here. You had to be careful when you made your uh, a, a richer adjustment that you didn't uh, ram it up into that plate and uh, bend the rod or do other damage. So um, I'm just going to show you here. Secure this out of the way so we can slide that out. Okay, what it basically is. There's a spring in there, I'll dig it out. This is a spring that, uh, probably a better way to um, explain it, is if you had a regular carburetor that didn't have the step up cam on, on the uh, primary um, throttle shaft, uh, it would use vacuum to overcome uh, the spring. So basically what would happen is uh, high vacuum condition, idler, cruising along, uh, just maintaining speed, the vacuum would pull down on this piston, it sits in a cylinder right in here, and so the vacuum would be pushing against that spring and compressing it, and uh, that would, the metering, um, the metering rods hang one from here, one from the other side, there's one for each side, and they go down in here and straight down into the primary metering jets, down inside the float bowl. Um, like I was saying, if you didn't have that step up cam like they have in the thermal quads, vacuum would hold that down like so. And as you uh, say, if you're doing a, a full throttle um, acceleration, vacuum would drop. Uh, the spring would have more power than the vacuum signal, and it would make this come up and out of the uh, cylinder bore higher. And that would withdraw your uh, primary metering rods out of the jets to give you a richer mixture. Okay, then. That's just a basic explanation. I'll park that there for now. Um, a lot of people look at the top of that and think, wow, that's, that's some real hocus pocus, but uh, I'll show you how simple it really is. It's basically just a, it's just a threaded rod. It has a flat machined on here so you can grab it with a small wrench or pliers in case the, uh, the threads are a tight fit in here. They really should be a, a snug fit. You don't want them moving um, after you make the adjustment. On the end, it's a little bit radius on the end where it, uh, it rides on the step-up lever that's actuated by the cam inside. So basically that's all it is, it's a threaded rod, aluminum piston by the looks of things. It's got a counter bore for the spring to fit inside that I was just showing you. Uh, one thing I've noticed about this when you're checking yours, um, it should be down tight against the piston. There's a slot in the piston, this is a one piece uh, steel, uh, well you can call it a tree branch if you like, one out of each side, it's one piece. It's supposed to be uh, pressed in there. This one, as you can see, it's wobbling. That's a, that's a no good. Uh, what you need to do is uh, probably sit, I'll probably sit this on a block of wood on the bottom, and then push this uh, arm down tight, and then get a small punch and a hammer, and swedge these ends over here to push the uh, the, the cross arm here in nice and tight. You don't want it. Uh, you don't want it wobbling like that. Uh, first one I've seen. This is only a $25 carburetor, like I was saying. I bought it for some spare parts, namely the uh, primary meeting jets and the, uh, the metering rods. Okay, then with that, assuming we got that all fixed, we can just put the rod back in. And when you reassemble it, if you happen to take yours out, if you're just going to do a, a basic setting, is bring the screw up about even with the top of the piston here. But just make sure you have clearance. Uh, when you set it down back down in there. Okay, we'll put it all back in there. Um, on the angle I'm doing it, like if you put the carb right on a 90 degree angle, so you're seeing the front or back of it or the sides, you wouldn't have to do this, but I'm on about a, almost a 45 degree here, so i got to use this little helper here. Hold the spring in that piston counter bore. 
So one more thing you should watch out for is there's two, well, protrusions. Um, you could call them dimples, but actually dimples go in. Uh, these protrusions, uh, they rub up against the back of the choke air horn here. You have to make sure that these dimples are rubbing up against there. It's to keep the whole thing from, from wobbling and uh, it locates it for center for the um, less friction and less uh, better centering for the, uh, the metering rods. So we can get that in there now. Just got to hold the spring in here. There's two slots on the, uh, the side here. You can see this is going down and the, there's two slots. So just make sure they have it oriented right so that these two dim dimples are facing towards you, the ones the uh, concave side. The protrusions, like I say, are rubbing up against the back of the air horn. <coughs> Excuse me. See, there's the metering rods. They hang in here. In order to get them in there with the, uh, the carb the way it is now, you'd have to have this up as high as it. You can get them in, actually, with this other linkage in here if you release this, this uh, the stop plate and bring it all the way up. You can actually use the needle nose pliers and uh, either install or uh, take out the, the rods. So anyways, you just have to take this down here, blow here, and then put the, um, the stop plate. It's kind of hard to, to do what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to do it on the angle. I'd, for the video, everything's a little bit different. You have to kind of make it so the audience can see. So we put that back in there like so. Make sure the screw's tight. You don't want that loosening up and dropping into your engine. Start damaging valves and pistons and cylinders. You don't want that. No parts <laughs> should really be below your carburetor. So anyway, there's uh, there's what it looks like installed. Um, so to get this base setting here, um, in a factory shop manual, I remember reading a few years back, it says never never play with this adjustment in the metering rod uh, department. It says you'll upset emissions and it's a factory set deal. Uh, which may be true if you're doing uh, emissions testing, but there's all kinds of different adjustments you can do here, and you can still get it back to where you wanted it anyways. So, first off, what you want to do is make sure that the fast idle cam is all the way off. If you happen to have your choke still hooked up, you can disconnect that. It's usually just one clip. and just set the rod aside. And uh, same with the fast idle cam. Make sure it's all the way off. And uh, to get your uh, idle setting back to where it was, <coughs> excuse me, just put a mark on your curb idle screw, or if you've got the solenoid, same thing. You want to try to get it back in adjustment. Um, so I'll back it off. It's uh, whatever you like. I go six turns, say. Two, three, four, five, six. That's just so you can get it back. And write things down as you go along if uh, you're not remembering what you're doing. You can go five turns, doesn't matter, just as long as you put it back where it was. It saves you. Uh, start up troubles and getting it back to the idle it was at before. <clears throat> so with the fast idle cam, screw off, off of all the steps and t totally off uh, the, the idle screw, uh, curb idle, whether the, it's uh, the stationary one or the solenoid, make sure everything's all backed off so the primary throttle uh, throttle valves are totally closed. Um, then what you want to do, I use a jeweler screwdriver, it's out of a, like a five dollar set, there's like half a dozen screwdrivers and it seems to work really well for this. It's hard to see where I'm going. It's in there now. You just push down on there and then what you want to do is get your fingers holding that oh, sweater caught. You want to get your, um, we got to reposition the screwdriver it jumped out there. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, <clears throat> go counterclockwise a little bit, make sure that that tree isn't doing anything and then you just slowly go clockwise till you feel it move. It's a, it's a really, you got to really feel this one. Uh, you probably wouldn't want to do it when the car is too hot. Cold is okay. You don't hurt your hands that way. So you go clockwise till you feel it move and just go back and forth a few times. And as soon as you feel it move while you're going clockwise, that's your start position. I just felt it move there. Okay, so there's uh, that zero set just where it starts to move and then uh, some people say uh, one turn or one and a half turns take your pick for the base setting so we'll just go one turn so there's half one that's your base setting for uh, for you could say emissions and uh, leaner mixture um, 
but if say you want uh, performance out of it and you're not really worried about emissions testing or anything then you can uh, go ahead and adjust it uh, richer if you want by going clockwise on this thing it'll it'll bring the metering rods up higher out of the jets and you'll have a richer mixture uh, to start with and all the way through the fuel curve as far as the metering rods are concerned um, one thing you really got to watch here I'm going to use a rag on this throttle because it's a little hard on the hands <coughs> excuse me bring it up slowly all the way make sure that uh, nothing's going to bind here um, you can see here there's quite a bit of clearance that's with the base setting so say if you were doing some adjustments on this and you want it to go a lot richer like I, I was trying to cure a, a lean surge problem so I did maximum adjustments I adjusted the floats inside as high as they would go without uh, binding on the gaskets on the gasket rather <clears throat> and then I also did the metering tree to richen it up and uh, you can um, you can with this throttle held fully open okay you can bring this up clockwise till it touches and then back it down a bit um, especially if you've got the solid steel plate on here you want about a 30 second clearance because if you start ramming this piston into the the solid plate you'll bend the plate up and or you, you could bend the um, the rod that actuates this uh, metering rod tree here so make sure you got clearance when you've got full throttle applied um, so anywhere in between you can go in quarter inch increments from the zero and bring it up a quarter inch clockwise each time and go for a test run but you can go ahead and adjust just um, watch those two settings the minimum and the maximum so there you have it for the uh, metering rod adjustment on the thermoquad hope that helps you so get out there and give it a try take care and bye for now